Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we're tracking Tropical Storm Debbie before it makes landfall in the Big Bend area of Florida, as well as another tropical wave developing in the Caribbean and could follow in the footsteps of Debbie. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to TropicalTibbets.com for Sunday, August 4th, 2024. The black arrow is Tropical Storm Debbie in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, intensifying and likely to become a hurricane later on today. Then we have our tropical wave in purple that is now Disturbance 1, monitored by the National Hurricane Center, and two other tropical waves in the main development region in purple and one coming off the coast of Africa in blue. Here's the vorticity, the sink and energy and spin in the atmosphere. You can see what we're looking for in terms of intensity with Tropical Storm Debbie in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, circular and powerful in nature. And our other tropical weave just outside the Caribbean is starting to increase its in vorticity and the tropical wave behind it is still elongated and stretched out. Here's the latest satellite image of Tropical Storm Debbie. As you can see, it's getting a little bit better organized. It's got the outflow moving with it with the very low wind shear environment. And if we look at the microwave over the last 48 hours, we can see how it, when it came off the coast of Cuba, how it rapidly started to coalesce that vorticity and really starting to strengthen, which is why it's on the knocking on the door of becoming a hurricane as we speak. So here is the forecast from the National Hurricane Center, the cone of uncertainty, showing it is expected to become a hurricane later on today. We have hurricane warnings in effect for the Big Bend area of Florida. Potentially could be a Category 2 hurricane, still strengthening as it's making its way inland tomorrow morning. And you can see the big cone of uncertainty when we get after the impact with Florida where it could be potentially five days from now. And yes, I said five days from now, it's going to be a very slow moving system after making landfall because of what we discussed in past videos with the high pressure and the steering currents being very weak. Here's the spaghetti track guidance model showing the very spread out nature after landfall where it can go potentially even go westward. Uh, over land towards Mississippi and Alabama or very slowly crawl up towards the Virginia area. But depending on what happens, they're all in agreement where this storm's going to be and how strong it's going to be over the next 24 hours. It's The question is after that, 48 hours to seven days from now, will it reemerge back over into the Atlantic and re-strengthen? Will it stay over land and just dump a ton of rain over p regions? That is the uncertainty. But right now they are certain that this is all four hurricane models showing pretty much the same strength storm in the same location in the next 24 hours. So everyone in the Big Bend region needs to, if you haven't evacuated, get out now. Now in terms of actual rainfall from this system, as you can see, this is the uh, HMON. This is one of the hurricane models that takes it back over water. Uh, briefly before going back inland over South Carolina and Georgia. And in doing so, it's going to dump a ton of rain as it stalls over that region for the next three to five days. And the National Hurricane Center is forecasting in and around the Savannah region a huge amount of rain, maybe upwards of two feet in Savannah with that purple region. So we're going to have a high chance of flash flooding and localized flooding all in this region over the next five to seven days. So here's the key messages from the National Hurricane Center regarding tropical storms, soon to be Hurricane Debbie. On the left is in English and on the right is in Spanish. And you can pause that to take a chance to read it. But with the impact coming tomorrow in terms of landfall, there's also the threat of storm surge, which is why there's evacuations going on. So we have a potential in the Big Bend region of 6 to 10 feet of storm surge coming inland from this storm. Moving on to Disturbance 1, here's the latest satellite image of this tropical wave 
getting itself a little bit better organized. Going to be moving through the Lesser Antilles Islands, Trinidad, Tobago, between now and tomorrow. And it's got a 10% chance of developing into a, our next tropical system. If it does become so, it would be Ernesto. And it's got a 20% chance of doing this over the next seven days. Now here is the GFS model where we can track our purple hexagon, which is Disturbance 1, Tropical Wave behind it in pink, and then black would be uh, Tropical Storm Debbie. So under the purple hexagon where Disturbance 1 is located, it is trying to develop an upper level ridge, which would decrease the wind shear and help this storm to develop. But if we look in the Eastern Caribbean, we also see there's a large amount of wind shear in that region. So if it can't maintain this upper level ridge, then it will have a hard time developing until it gets towards the Western Caribbean. Uh, because of there's also a large amount of Saharan air layer that's going to try to infiltrate if there is any dry air and wind shear. So by the time we get to two days from now on August 6th, the tropical waves could be moving through the eastern towards the central Caribbean. And if it stays low enough, but if it's too low, it may interact with land from Venezuela and ABC Islands, hampering development. But staying low in the Eastern Caribbean will help maintain the storm structure and vorticity because there's a high amount of wind shear coming through this storm over the next two days in the Eastern Caribbean. So all the moisture will be very low in terms of this tropical development. But that will start to change by the time we get to Friday, August 9th. As you can see in purple, the vorticity will start to move into the Western Caribbean, redevelop that upper level ridge, which will allow to decrease that wind shear and protect its moisture bubble from the Saharan air layer around the system. And as you can see also in black, we still have Debbie circling around the Southeast United States at this time, even though the tropical wave is right on its tail at this point. And speaking of this tropical wave being right on its tail, in a week's time, it could also be in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, as we see here on next Sunday, August 11th, uh, pretty much in the same position where Debbie is today, potentially down to a 994 millibar tropical storm in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And if we go one step further, making landfall Sunday night into early Monday morning next week as one possibility. I'm not saying this is going to actually happen, but this is a threat. People trying to recover from the impacts of Debbie from this weekend could be facing another tropical system next weekend if this turns out to be the correct solution from the GFS model. If we look at the European model for reference, we see that it doesn't go into the Gulf of Mexico uh, the eastern Gulf of Mexico at least, but it does continue moving towards Nicaragua, Honduras, Belize, and takes that more westward track across the Central America region and southern Mexico. So those are two possibilities, either continuing to go westward towards Central America or like the GFS, popping up into the Gulf of Mexico and being a threat right behind the impacts of Debbie. So here's the solutions in purple is our hexagon where on the left is the European model, taking it more through Central America and to the Western Gulf of Mexico, potentially. GFS that takes it a little bit more northward, potentially towards the Eastern Caribbean, uh, Eastern Gulf of Mexico, sorry, right behind Debbie. So we'll keep an eye on Debbie and see what land impacts it could have after landfall, if it's gonna be spreading a ton of rain, or if it's going to be stalling out and re-strengthening and then making another landfall, or if it just stays overland altogether. And we'll keep an eye on Disturbance 1 to see where it goes, if it stays a threat towards the Central American countries, or if it tries to pop into the Gulf of Mexico in the footsteps of Debbie. And then also we'll track our two other tropical waves as well for their chances of developing. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather. I'd like to give a shout out to Mia Strong for donating to yesterday's channel. And if you would like to donate to our channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks.
Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.